Sure? Nope. Maybe not. Sweet. So don't get an MC introduction. Even even better, even better. <laughs> Live, undiluted, undisputed, heavyweight champion. So, hello and welcome. I'm really happy to see you here. My name is Gargai. I come from Hungary. I'm a part of conspiracy, various other demo groups, various parties organized. And came from Europe, and I'm going to summarize this little talk about some differences I've, I've experienced while organizing parties over here in California and parties over there in Europe in various sizes, shapes, quantities, and we'll try to, to shed some light on some things that I found interesting and, and maybe offer some helpful advice in case you would venture into the insane world of party organizing and no sleep and malnutrition and eventually a heart attack probably. Now, uh, the introduction text in, on the website actually said that I will probably offend you. Now, I'm from Europe in America. I will probably offend you. That's pretty much a given. The thing is, and I'm going to start with a little anecdote on why I'm pretty sure about that. You know about NBC. We did this little part. Oh, I said the N word. Sorry. Uh, yes, N word. The block party where the N word is a different thing. I want to start with a little anecdote. We did the NBC. We did a little seminar with Gloom and uh, and Steeler, friends of mine. And at some point, for some reason, we wanted to reference a Polish coder who I will leave tactfully unnamed at that point. We were referencing him for some reason, and he wasn't there. And Gloom just said, oh, well, he's Polish. He's probably out there drinking. And everyone just went, oh, what did he just say? And that's where we met the American PC scene. And what they didn't know is that said Polish coder was planning to bring uh, several bottles of what they call the Zubrowka from Poland to your lovely country. Downside is that this certain liquor is banned in this country for reasons unknown. It probably causes cancer a lot slower than, than tobacco. And so on, in, in case I would say something that you consider tactless, just consider that I might have a bit more experience considering several countries than you might. Because you know, Europe is a versatile place. And as my first point, it's very important to realize that Europe is as the, around the same size as the United, United States of America. You're one single country that has the same size as Europe. What this basically means is that someone from Oregon or someone from California might be living in the same country as someone in Florida or someone in New York, but they still have the whole, this whole landmass in between them. And that makes a lot of complications. I mean, in Europe, you just, you know, you just you realize that if you're living in Portugal and you have a friend in Estonia, you're not going to see them each other that, that often because you're in two different countries, two different languages, currencies, and all that. You have even even with Schengen, sometimes you have to get a, well, not anymore, but you had to get a passport to travel from one country to another. In the U.S., you don't have that problem, but it's still so far away. You're still in the other end of the country, and when you're saying, you know, in in European seeing channels news channels or, or any sort of like announcement channel, you just say, you know, come to my party. It's in Portugal. And you, just, you, can, you can just say, well, it's in, you know, I, I, I'm in Hungary. I'm in the Ukraine. I'm in the other end of the, 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 the continent. You can just say that, and people will go, well, yeah, OK. It will probably cost you a couple of hundred euros to actually fly here, so I'm not going to bother you that much. In the US, I kind of felt for so far that Maybe given the number of parties you have, which is you know one, two, three at, at most at, at a year, or events you have, you can't really feel that kind of excuse. Because if, if you have a party in California, 
You just say, you know, you have to come to California, you don't have many parties, even if it costs, you know, an arm and a leg to actually travel across the country for that. So for some reason, I felt that the U.S. doesn't generate an excuse when you have a party all around, you know, the whole continent. Even if it costs, you know, that amount of money, you still feel obliged to go, and it's great. And that's great even if it breaks people. But that's the, the land mass itself is really important. And um, because of that importance, I think this country is a really good, uh, really good soil for more demo parties. So I'm, part of this talk is, is, is uh, to kind of encourage people to make some more demo parties. When I was asked to do this talk, um, Jason basically I said, you know, I asked him, what, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, well, you know, you organize an American party, you organize European parties. It would be interesting to, for you to, to compare the two. And I was like, well, there's not much difference. And he just said, you can't really say that with a straight face, don't you? Like, well, you know, maybe. But then I realized, then I realized I was here last August in California organizing a party in the Hilton in San Jose where you had to come down, you know, the most famous hotel of all time. You come down, you go through one door, and you're at the party place. And you have a Mexican chef outside. You have an HD screen, and everything is NVIDIA. And then in November, I was organizing a party in a village in Norway of 4,000 people. What a competition engineered for shitty music was delayed 10 minutes because someone threw up on the front porch. So yeah, maybe there is a difference. So I started thinking um, on, on what's different. And almost, also, I, I'm, I organize a funk, uh, party in Budapest called Function. I advise everyone to go there. Uh, but I know it's a little chance, but you know. After NBC, when I just told the, told, you know, the eight seminar speakers, you know, come to Function, everyone said, well, OK. And I thought, well, that was easy. And they did. And uh, there's also function is a very interesting party in, in terms of it's what I like to call a big small party, as opposed to NBC, which was a small big party, because there was a lot of money involved, a lot of celebrities on the scene involved, and all that stuff. But in, in essence, we didn't make much more than uh, like 120 people buying tickets. Or I don't know the exact numbers. I haven't asked yet. But, but it was small compared to the venue side. It was small compared to it was a corporate event and all this kind of stuff. As opposed to function, which goes from these two pockets, considering budget. And you know, we spend a lot of time, month, from our you know, power in our spare time to actually make it happen. And we managed to make 180 people come there from various countries, from various age groups, and all that stuff. So even if it's a small party, we managed to make it big. And that gives a nice contrast. I was really happy that I was able to experience both. Now, budget is an important. I mentioned the word budget before. I asked a couple of guys here who, has been, who have been to earlier North American parties. Now, it appears that I think up until 2001, 2002, the Nade series, which were probably the, still the most well-known, I guess, well, I mean, Bob Block Party excluded, it's probably still the most well-known uh, series here in America. They were held in like universities and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So they ha kind of had that European nomad vibe to, to the, the housing itself. As opposed to, I think from 2002 on, was at, when was the last first pilgrimage? 2002, right? Three, okay, sorry. So 2003, four, five, when this kind of hotel party uh, took over, the whole hotel party concept, when you, you try to disguise your demo party as a developer conference, and you know everyone's holding daiquiris in a suit, and, and you know, in the end, there's a competition and all that stuff. But, but it really isn't the same kind of uh, free-for-all youngster hacker thing. And I'm really happy that Nodacon is really so loose so far. Or I guess it will continue even looser when the bar opens. But you know, I, I, I enjoy that a, a lot. Um, during the history of parties, and this is a research, well, well, not research, but kind of like information I got kind of found out from a lot of people uh, in Hungary, like older seniors, is that 
the traditionally two kinds of parties, well, two, but like kind of like gray area between the two. It, what they entitled them is the Finnish model and the German model, because they're the two biggest group, two biggest countries in the scene right now. And they certainly have their own kind of uh, polarized way of organizing parties. The Finnish way, probably the most well-known is, is assembly, is the way that you just want to make a big party, whatever it takes. Just make a big party, and if you want, you involve external forces. You want involve external people. You might involve gamers, or standard artists, computer art, like I don't know, machinima, or or even hackers. You know, basically whatever it takes. I, I it wasn't. I wasn't man that way. Basically, the point is like. We don't have that much of a hacker culture in, in, in Europe, so it would be harder for us to involve hackers. It's just that there we have a lot more gamers, so gaming parties are really big. And uh, Assembly did that. They started as a pure demo scene event, and they kind of evolved into this huge, huge 4,000 people gaming event with demo scene attached. They're still demo scene organizers, but obviously can't deny that you have 4,000 gamers and 200 demo seniors. It, part of the infrastructure. They have to pay the whole somehow, so they kind of balance it out. But it's really, they are really respectful for us. And, and, and uh, that's kind of the Finnish way of, of, of doing a party, like the traditional Finnish way. I'm not saying there are Finnish parties, like all Finnish parties are like that. But it's also like the alternative party, where they basically say the demo scene is also just one of the things. And we have you know, computer artists, we have standard artists who like sculptures and music, and you know, even chamber music and all this kind of stuff. And, and they do it. And, and sure, the organizers are stemming from the demo scene, but they branch out. And they have, like, they had Front 242, you know, one of the world's most famous industrial bands from Belgium, perform in Helsinki for the first time at an alternative party. And, I mean, that's like as big as it gets. But it's still, uh, you know, partly demo scene and partly art and partly computer. It's just that they, they took the demo scene definition really loose. And they expand on it. And it's great. And it's really enjoyable. I, I recommend everyone to try it. The other model is the German model. You know, the German precision and everything. They want it pure, like really pure. If you're not a demo seater, you can come in, you can check it out, but do not do anything else. This is our party. You follow our rules. That's the German model. They've been doing this for Mecca Symposium, for Evoke, and you know, we all know Breakpoint. We all know Breakpoint. It's a pure scene party, 800 to 100, uh, 1,200 people. You know, it's like big, and really big. But you can only pull it off if you have your user base. You have to be purist. You cannot let anyone else. You obviously have less visitors than at the assembly. You know, you don't have 4,000 people. You, you can get 1,000. You're happy. Breakpoint is the only point the party that can pull it off. But that's because they've been working really hard, and they compromise none. So. That's like the German way of I, I think in Hungary, in our country, the Finnish way of partying was, was pretty, really prominent from around 93 to 99. And then we kind of adopted the German model instead, because parties became less fun. And that's an important point to make. Why is a party less fun if you, if you have other cultures? I mean, this is fun. You have hackers. You have demo seniors. They have all the same motivation. You know, make something awesome. And it's great. And that's because they do those two cultures have respect for each other. And they have a, like, you know, they have like common ground and all that stuff. But the important part when you're making a mixed party is that you have to have your people be able to diplomatically work it out. And also, if you're a demo scene, you want the demo scene to have that respect. You want that to have that certain area you're building on to be intact. You want your demo scene to be still remain demo scene. And I had a lot of interesting talks with American and European seniors. And I'm going to, 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 to mention something that's probably a faux pas here. But when we were organizing NVC, you can't imagine the fact we got, like, oh, you're doing a commercial party. You're selling the demo scene. And you know, after we got the paycheck, we started thinking, yeah, maybe. But, but the important part was that, and I talked to Guybrush a lot with this, and, and, and he tried to explain his point and tried to explain mine, 
and I just, I just realized that it's one of those Europe versus America things that we probably will never understand. We have different fears in those two continents. In Europe, when you're organizing an event, the thing you fear the most is that your lieutenants, assuming you're, you're the main organizer, just that's, let's, let's, let's kind of raise that hypothetical situation. You're the main organizer, or at least one of the board members or whatever. What you fear the most in Europe is you're organizing something and it gets out of your control and goes somewhere else. You're making an MO party. You have all these people on your hand and you realize that, you know, their respective managed areas are getting out of hand. And all of a sudden, you know, it takes only one year or two and you're, you realize that the demo scene is getting in the back in front of, you know, behind all these other things. All of a sudden, your party that you built is suddenly a gamer event. As opposed to America, where, where you have this fear about corporations. Is it how Guybrush explained it, I'm trying to remember his exact, exact words, is that corporations tend to do this, this tactic of, of embrace, establish, and then extinct, or something like that. I think that this, that this, this exact term, they use it from Microsoft a lot, that they kind of like adopt the standard and then change it and then destroy it. I don't know if, I can't cite examples, but I know I read it in Wikipedia about this. Mm, what? Yeah, I think, I think that's the most prominent example. But it doesn't have sound. Oh. Oh well. Oh, nice. Something I can so show my grandchildren so they will never take me seriously again. So, the important part for us, at least at MVC, was that what we say is what's going to happen. They can pitch in, they can do the technical stuff, they can build the infrastructure, but we're not going to let us. You know, we're not going to let our, our ways go. And if, if we want something and it's possible, we know it's possible, then it's going to happen. So uh, that's what the way we went in. And we had no problems with corporations. Even break, think, think about Breakpoint. It's like the most purest demo party ever seen. But still, they have, you know, they had Intel, they have NVIDIA, they had 20th Century Fox, they had, you know, big, 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 big corporations. They had no problem with it because they, just you know, put the sponsorship deal out and say, this is what we want. You can contribute in this, but you're not changing the rest. So as is there a grassy knoll here somewhere? This is going to happen often? Hope not. So anyway, I find this really important to point out that that I think this is a cultural difference. I think we all can agree on that. that Europe, we're in, in Europe, we're more laid back and we're more afraid of ourselves. Ourselves as people, ourselves as people involved. Because there's nothing worse. You can, you, there's outside force and inside force that changes your path. And you're more afraid of the outside force. You're more afraid of corporations coming in and pushing something out of their designated way. We're much more afraid of someone taking over the steering wheel as soon as we're not paying attention. And that we've seen that happen. Europe generally has a lot of 
parties which are mixed, like gamer versus you know creative art things. We had the party, that, that's the name TP, the party in Denmark. The demo scene organizers just stopped caring, and walked out, and all of a sudden the party that went, you know, 2001 was fairly horrible, 2002 was even worse, and in 2003 I don't think it even happened. You know, they lost focus, but because the demo scene is a really important, demo seniors get things done. Demo seniors really want to get things done, and they do, because they have this, you know, heart and soul for the whole thing. They just want to push things, and they can get things done. As soon as they walk up, you're going to have problems. The same thing is, well, that's not the same thing. Luckily, not many parties have met this end. Uskal is still holding on. DreamHack is kind of gone, basically. They, don't, they still have, like, demo scene competitions, but, you know, you would, you would rather chew your own face off than watch that shit. And they, however, they have, like, two parties a year, and only one is, like, like, like marginally demo scene related. They only have a wild competition. The All the entries are consisting of, like, 14-year-olds filming each other, flipping off people on the street. It's not really pleasant to watch, because they let it go. They 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 would have they could have had you know this huge party in Sweden, with you know insane amount of good releases, just like Assembly does, just like you know Uskal does, just like uh, the Gathering does. But they didn't care. They just let it go, and you know that's that's how it ended up, and no one cares about DreamHack anymore. The Gathering is an interesting case. I have a lot of friends at the Gathering organizers. Norwegians are fantastic people, and they like you know. Basically, imagine a <laughs> it's okay. Imagine this truck going down the cliff and like two people trying to pull it back, and that's the gathering organizing. They are trying so hard, they're trying really hard to make this work, and I'm really rooting for them f to make it happen. I'm, and one day, I hope I can go to the gathering. It's more of a technical thing because it's at the same time as breakpoint, and I've been to seven breakpoints, and I'm ain't missing one. So it's like bad timing, really. But as soon as there's a chance, I'm going to the gathering as well because I'm really friendly with those guys, and they were fantastic. And assembly is an interesting case because a lot of Finnish seniors kind of like disown assembly for being so commercial and so big. But it's still, if you think about it, it still brings every year a fairly good amount of good releases. And I enjoyed the last assembly so much. It was one of, the, one of the best assemblies I've ever been to. It was, uh, I've been going for since 2004, and it was a lot of fun. Because that was the year when I felt like they actually cared a lot more. Sure, they had a lot of mess going on. I mean, I, as in the last 12 months, all the parties have been messy. You know, crisis and, and a lot of personal stuff. But assembly was great. I loved assembly. I think it was fantastic. And I think I'll, I, I hope I can go this year as well. So it's very important not to lose your ground contact, not to lose focus. If you're organizing a demo party, organize a demo party. Do not organize something with demos. Organize a demo party. There are ways to do it. There are traditions to do it. You have to remember what you're doing. Now, I've mentioned budget before, and I kind of like wandered away, which kind of happens with me sometimes. but. Budget, it's really important. I talked to Jason at NVC and asked about him, like, what's the budget of Block Party? And he said, well, Noticon, provi Noticon provides us pretty much all the infrastructure we need. All we do have to care about is, like, you know, bringing speakers here and, and having prizes and decoration. And at least it's not a low tone. So uh, it's very important for us, for... Uh, to separate, there's two kind of expenses at, at demo parties. There's infrastructure, which is necessary, and there's everything else is luxury. If you think about it, what do you need a demo for a demo party? You need a venue, you need a projector, beamer, and you need a sound system. Everything else, you can bring your own computer for a, for a demo PC. You can, you know, you can not have prizes. I've been to parties at Horde is it? Okay. So I've been to Horde, an Italian party with like about you know, 20 to 30 people at most at the peak in general. It was a fantastic party. I won the music competition. I got this box full of cookies and wine, I think, and, and grappa, which is a fantastic Italian liquor. And I got this box of cookies 
And I was so happy because they like branded it. Like they took this box of cookies and put all the Horde logos on it. And I was so happy. It felt so great. You know, it was one of the best prizes I got because it's like, like this cardboard box of like inanimate hardware. It was cookies. <laughs> and it's fantastic. It was so, you know, I know it sounds, you know, somewhat simple, but can't we just have a little simplicity sometimes? That's why in, in Hungarian parties, it's a tradition that you give out trophies and you give out like uh, medals and you give out, you know, party paraphernalia because you want people to remember it. You don't want people, I mean, you can give out, you're sure, you, 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 we at Function always try to give out hardware prizes, a couple of thumb drives and I don't know, CDs and stuff like that. We, not, nothing really ground blasting because we don't have the cash for that. But we try to get, at least kind of give out something that, you know, you can hang on the wall and you look at it in the morning and say, yeah, I won that. Sure, cookies don't stay, but at least you can keep the box. But it was really important from our perspective to realize that a party has infrastructure and luxury. And luckily for Block Party, infrastructure is taken care of by these fantastic people at Nodecon. So all you can take of is luxury. In Europe, it's really rare that you can do that. In Europe, you can really, really rarely say that everything is taken care of. All you have to take care of is promotion, getting prizes, and getting people to make some entries. That's a really, really tricky thing, and I haven't seen it done basically for a long time now. It's interesting because all these recent uh, art and, and community and, and all these uh, recent uh, society changes basically that people want to come together a lot more often, which is a great thing, have introduced this new term of the piggyback party, which basically means that you have a large event like Nodacon or We Had Envision or, or anything like that, and you can make this little sub-party like Block Party or NVC, and you can just use their facilities. In turn, you give them promotion, you give them, you know, uh, content and all this kind of stuff. It's really interesting. I We've seen it, uh, I've seen it happen in Hungary as well, in SceneCon 2003, where uh, it was uh, this huge conference for the ho in, in the whole city of, of, of Shalgo Tarian, where you had like sci-fi and anime and all this kind of stuff, and we just got kind of like asked for this building. It's like we want to do a demo party there. You know, we combine ticket and everything, and we got a building, we had a great party, and it was fun, and we, we did the piggybacking, and we got the infrastructure, and we all ha we had to take care of it. It was luxury, and that's a very important thing. Now, one thing you have to realize is that, for as far as I know, uh, the luxury part of Log Party can, you know, I think it ranges up to several thousand dollars. Now, what you have to realize in, in Europe, when you're making a party, several thousand dollars is just for the infrastructure. Getting actually a party place rented, is already a thousand dollars and then you have you know don't have a sound system you don't have a beamer you maybe you have to get some food and i don't know it's like there's a lot of infrastructural things that you have to actually create and that's europe in europe that's not always a given that's always something you kind of have to work for and but at least when you make that at least when you spend those several thousand dollars on your own party and then you don't have to care about Again, the dilution. I, one of the Dutch parties I've been to, Demo Zone, was a piggyback on Camp Zone. Camp Zone is this huge open air gaming event. Now, open air and gaming doesn't mix too well, and I just realized that when I was, when I was there. Basically, you just walk on a field, you have like this row of tents, and you look in the tent, and you see a guy with his office desk and an office chair sitting with his home computer playing in a fucking tent. It's w one of those surreal things that you just like backing away now. <laughs> then again, I mean, doesn't look much different from demo party. At least we got good drunk, so it like it balances out. But it was very important that those that that piggyback didn't work in the end because the camp zone organizers started to hate us because we had fun. It was interesting because we were just you know drinking beer and yelling at people, but not like like you know in German of course, and. Now, this is in the Netherlands, and, uh, and for some reason, they got pissed at us and actually managed to lock us out from, from, the, te uh, from the main hall during the night. Now, then the main hall was the only actual building at the place that was actually had, like, you know, solid walls and stuff like that. So it was probably the only place you, 
didn't freeze to death when he wanted to sleep, but he threw us out, and he threw us out in a tent in the middle of the field with mosquitoes. Now, they said it was fire regulation, and I know it was bullshit, because we did the same thing the last year, and we did the same thing the last two nights. So the third night, they just threw us out, and it was really pissed off, and th that party never happened again, at least not as cam zone. I'm still hoping it comes back one day. So that was, a, that was a bad bargain, and you can make bad bargains, and of course, you just have to realize bad bargains. But it's important to realize that um, in Europe, you always spend a lot more on your parties than, than in America. At least, in, in America, it's more logical to make a piggyback party, because you're so spread out, it's so hard for people to get there, and they will get here. There's no problem, at least for Amso. I mean, I, mean, I was really happy with MVC, and it's an amazing turnout. It was way more than we expected. We, um, okay, we were scared shitless, but still. It was way more than what we expected. But still, you can only aim, you know, 100 people is already tops. 100 people is already amazing. So uh, you can't really rely on, on, on you know, um, actually spending thousands of dollars and getting it back from, from like, entry tickets. As, uh, um, at, at least traditionally, demo scene parties are trying to keep the entry fee low, and just you know, almost almost as a as a significance thing, like saying you know what you're paying is actually just making the party happen and nothing more. So um, unless you ask for I don't know 100, 120 dollars for an entry fee, which for a pure demo party that's not a piggyback should be pretty tough then you're not going to break even. You're going to lose a lot of money, and that can discourage making another event. Now, um, it's also very interesting, and um, I'm going to tie in a couple of other countries here. The way or the motivation people go to a party and people organize a party. And it's been really interesting for me to see that. See, the word demo scene consists of two things, demo and scene. It consists of demos, art, you know, stuff you make with your computer, and there's the scene. It's essentially about demos and people. And there's two fairly distinct things. I like to say that it's the people are very important, because without people, there are no demos. But we are, without demos, people are just you know, hanging around at home. They don't meet. So it's equally important, I'd say. But um, considering the demo party angle, you have to realize that people are extremely important, because that's what you know, the demo party is for. And I've had the luck to, to talk to a Japanese senior who was at Breakpoint last week, which is probably history, that actually someone from Japan actually managed to travel to Europe all the way just to have fun. And I asked him, you know, why do you think it's so hard for Japanese seniors? That, well, there's no Japanese party. There are only online parties. Why, why does that happen? And he, well, he said, I don't think Japanese people like to party. And I'm not sure what he meant by that, but I guess it's also like they don't really want to meet. They just want to do stuff. They don't feel the necessity to actually know the face, the person behind the four-level nick four nickname. They don't really want to know that. They just want to, you know, release stuff and maybe win, maybe not. They just want to do the demos. They don't actually want to get to know each other. Now, it's really interesting in my experience here and, and at MVC as well is that Americans have no problem with meeting up. But they, they also don't really want to party. At least like, they don't pull it all the way out like Europeans. They don't end up like, you know, really shit-faced in some, you know, storage room. They just, you know, they just, they just want to meet up and they just want to, you know, hi, nice to see you again, see you again in six months, maybe. They, they, they are you're really reserved. And I'm not blaming that on the age limit. I would love to bait that on, on, on the average age of European seniors and American seniors. I mean... I think it's clo uh, close to 30, the average age. I think that would be a good guess. But still, the average age is close to 30 in Europe as well, except those th people around 30 or over 30, they wake up under the table anyway, and they had the hotel. That was one of my best experiences, or like funniest at least. I wake up under the table, of course, because I don't take hotels. I'm not that old. And, you know, I climb out of my sleeping bag, and... Under the next table, the brainstorm guys are like waking up. It's like, fuck, I had the hotel. And they don't have a sleeping bag. They don't have jack shit. They just woke up under the table, and they don't remember getting there. And they're over 30. Brainstorm is a group where old demo seniors go to die. Literally. You know, word is here. 
You know Word. He's in Brainstorm. It just tells a lot. I mean, come on. The brainstorm. Look, I <laughs> shouldn't go out on a limb on Brainstorm here. It's going to kill me. But, I mean, they have an Academy Award winner now in the group. Duh. But it's interesting that, that even people in Europe, when they get old, uh, they don't necessarily have the problem. Sure, they might take a hotel, but they might not. You know, they, they don't usually, I mean, inflatable mattresses should be good enough for everyone. And they have no problem with that. And I keep thinking, why is that? Why, 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 why that's like that? And I was actually making some sort of like conclusion that a lot of the computing histories in those both continents in Europe and, and America must be coming into play. I mean, I'm not sure about the actual computing history or computing culture history here in America, but in Europe what I see is that people would die for their fucking 8-bit computers. And I shit you not. They would kill for it. They have tattoos of like Commodore and Amiga. And they would, you know, people told me that they taught their children their first word was Amiga. And that's scary, but also kind of awesome. I mean, I don't want to know the kid when he grows up, but still. And, and that kind of gives you this amazing edge of culture. And that gives a dedication, and that gives you a heart. And that kind of explains why someone at their, you know, you all have heard of Truck. He's 40 now, 41, coming, becoming 41 this year. He has no problem with sleeping at parties because he wants to absorb the atmosphere. He doesn't want to be in a sterile hotel. He just wants to be in the middle. He wants to absorb. He wants to be part of the party. And I don't know about Americans. I don't know about American uh, computing culture. But really, were you that rabid about your platforms? I mean, I'm not looking at Trickster because he has this 286 running up. But would you, like, how do you remember your first ever 8-bit computers? Or how do you remember your first 16-bit computers? Would you kill for those platforms? Do you still have your old first computers? We have some of them. That's good enough. <laughs> like one. But in, in, in Europe, that was such a part of his, especially from the country I come from. I come from a country that was in, in 89, it was still not a democ democracy. So, I mean, getting a computer already established a community because there was so far and few and in between. They, they talk about hacker spaces. I met some of the people who organize hacker spaces. I'm great friends with the Meta Lab guys in Austria, and we have some several stu similar stuff in, in, in Budapest as well. But if you think about it, hacker space is just as an, it's, it's like the, 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 the Web 2.0 word for computer club, which was like the 80s word for it. And in Hungary, when thing, things were still communist, computers came in. No one knew how. Oh, well. The people who got the computers knew how it came in. The other ones weren't told for security reasons. But computers happened. And people would come together in a block or in a club or, you know, just they, they would just use each other's computers. They had the chance to do so. The community was built because of the situation. And that gave us an interesting history of the whole thing. It gave us a bond. And I'm, no wonder, I'm, I'm not surprised that all these kids, I mean, we all remember copying by floppy. And we all, we all remember, I don't know, just, just, just staying at friend's place, playing various games he got hold of at that time. And that gives this whole bond of the whole thing. But we like to remember these things. And because of your landmass in America, it was probably a lot harder to do that. Sure, you had BBS and all that stuff, but it's already a remote thing. You already have a phone line in between you and, you know, whoever you're swapping with. So I can imagine that the whole person versus person bonding thing is a lot more remote here. But it's interesting because society is overcompensating if you think about it. You're, everything is web 2.0. You have Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, whatever. And it's interesting that it simulates of people coming together. But it, in essence, what it does is that you don't even meet your friends anymore because you can just read their live journal. It's actually making people more distant. It's like this aggressive individualism that you're pushing yourself forward and not actually playing, paying attention to everyone else. But that's a whole different thing. That's, I don't want to really go into that. Uh, if you, I mean, like, you want to talk about it, sure, I'll be outside protesting in a van. 
uh, it's very important that there are very much cultural differences between American parties and US parties. And that's why I enjoy the fact that we're doing demo scene parties, because demo scene has 25 years of history. It's really important to realize that that history can make things work. That history can bring a US scene or a European scene together and be best friends. One of the best things that I've seen, I'm going to tell this, Ferris of Youth Uprising, he's around 14, 15, 16 years old, I'm not, I'm not sure. He was at his first party. He lives in, in uh, Iowa, I think, like in the middle of nowhere, geometrically. And he was at his first party, and that was the first time he ever met seniors, not just European seniors, seniors in general. And he knew a lot of names, but, you know, he met up with, with, with Navis and Chaos and all these scene celebrities he would never dare to dream of. And he was actually having fun, and I talked to him a bit and, in, you know, introducing a couple of people. And between the uh, two compos, I saw him talking to two guys, and they were, you know, having a debate about how they do demos and how they like, you know, certain demos to be made. And I was like, oh, by the way, you haven't met. They're Ferris, this is Preacher and Duckers. And he was like, dude, you're from Outrex? Holy shit, I love your demos. You're my favorite group. And he didn't know. He was talking like 15 minutes to Duckers, and he didn't know that one of his idols is standing in front of him. Of course, you can, you can write it up for being lazy and not check up on your you know, favorite people, at least how they look when you go to a party. But, you know, 10 minutes later, they're sitting next to each other with laptops and swapping source code and, like, complaining about, how did you do that? How did you do your snare drum in your 4K? Mine doesn't sound that good. And it was two-way, because Duckers was also like, how do you do that? You know, you're, like, five years younger than me, and you kick ass. How do you do that? And it was one of the, like, that, that, that made organizing a party over here just, just worth it for me. And I think organizing parties is always worth it uh, afterwards. Like, two weeks before, you're basically just dying, 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 dying. And then you have, like, 48 hours of rush, which is the party. You don't enjoy it. You just die. And then the next two weeks, you basically just think, ah, this wasn't worth it. And then you look back six months later and go, yeah, man, we did it. It was awesome. So it has a really long turnaround time, but it's in, in the end, I wouldn't change it for the world. Now, I guess for the end, I would give out a couple of, I don't know, shout outs or, 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 or at least some motivational parts about how to, not how to, but the, why you should do a party. The US is large. You have 250 million people as far as I know, or at least somewhere in that, that order of magnitude. And you only have two parties. Now, we have two parties in Hungary, which has 10 million people. It's re as I said, it's really hard for an American senior to meet up with everyone else. You have to have an occasion. You, you are spread out all around the country. And I'm talking about the Canadians as well. They have to go to another country. They don't have their own. <coughs> you should. But they don't have their own party either. So they have two situations in a year when they can actually meet up with the rest of the group. I mean, Northern Dragons is like a 50, well not 50-50, but you know, Canadian-American group. So it's really hard for them to actually meet the other members. Give them more occasions. They will be grateful. Trust me on this one. There's nothing more grateful than a senior who only has a couple of chances a year to see each other. And if you give them a good soil for actually meeting the others, they will, you know, they will make the best demos you've ever seen just because they think, you know, this guy made us, you know, meet us, meet, meet, us, meet each other again. We should really honor that by, you know, bringing out the A card and, you know, just kicking ass. And that's what makes good demos. That's it's, it's the opportunity. And um, I would really encourage to, to, for people to make demo parties uh, all around the U.S. I mean... There's been one in the East Coast, one in the West Coast, so it's kind of like, oh, you need one in Colorado or somewhere. <laughs> and uh, I would really appreciate if more of the U.S. seniors would show up at European parties and absorb that. Because I'm not saying it's a European thing, but it's a European thing. You have to... Co I'm, I'm trying to put this mildly, okay? <laughs> but... European parties are so much different. They are so cathartic. They, it's, 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 it's not just a conference. It's, you know, Woodstock is nothing compared to those shit. It's one of those things that you just remember. 
And those people, and I'm looking at Phoenix, who has been there, I think he can, I think he can underline my statement about how, you know, how much of a life-changing experience it can be to, to, to be at breakpoint and to see debris being played in a competition live and all of a sudden it ends and 800 people go fucking bonkers around you and they tore up the building with the screaming and standing ovation. Never seen anything like that. I wouldn't change it for a world. It wasn't one of the best experiences I ever had and I don't think you should skip on to that. And I think that's the end note I can have here. And if you have Q&A, which you really shouldn't, you just shut up and make demos and come to parties and make parties. But shoot. Do we have like another one? For the benefit of the tape. I, I said Horde was 20, 30 people at most. I'm 20, 30 people. That's less in this room. You know, but we still had an amazing party because we went there because we, have, you know, we had great friends there. We haven't seen them for a while. We just said, you know, we have a car. Let's go. And we went there. Now, about, about larger parties, Assembly might have 4,000 gamers and 200 seniors, but those gamers respect the demo scene. Those gamers turn off their monitors when the compo is running. They have to because the compo won't run otherwise, but that's a different story. But they also, like, if you have, if you show your demo senior, some of them will come up and ask questions. Like, you know, if I want to learn coding, where do I start? If I want to, you know, what kind of tools do you use? And then all this kind of stuff. So that's amazing. I, haven't, I don't know about the gathering, but considering they always have, like, 10 demos, and that's, that's Norway only, I think they're doing something right. Well, critical, cri critical mass for what? Critical mass is people doing something fun or exciting. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's a critical selection of people. I think in the U.S. you have to find the people who can make a party good. I think that's, that's one of my lucky things that I had with Function, is that one day I just realized, you know, why isn't anyone from Poland here? And I just, you know, f rang up a few Polish friends, you know, want to come over and party? And they said, yeah. And, you know, the, the party mood curve just, you know, went through the roof because they know how to party. They, went, they brought, like, I don't know, 15 people from Poland, and all of a sudden they loved the party, they had a lot of fun, and they just rose that, like, this, like, intensity level of the party. And I'm thinking, jackpot. You know, I made it. Parties are fantastic now. So I think... You have to realize, you have to find who the people are who, who make this party intensity come up. Because the par if the party intensity up is, uh, is up, then a lot of people will think, yeah, this is actually really cool. I'm coming back next year, no question. And for, of course, it's, it's all different for everyone. It's different. For some people, it's the releases. For some people, it's the booze. For some people, it's the facilities. For some people, it's the seminars. It's every, for everyone has their own little perk of what they enjoy at a party. But... There's something for everyone, and it's, it's all trial and error, really, but there's always something, and you have to make sure that everyone enjoys your party, and you have to make sure what, like, have to find out who are the people who can attract the other people, because if I talk to one of the Polish guys who organizes bus trips to other parties, and he said, you know, you should organize a, a trip to 
function, he will do it and the others will follow because he knows, you know, oh yeah, he's going, then it must be a good party. And it's very important to see us, oh yeah, he's going, then, you know, I'm going. And this kind of like chain of like tree or people. And that's really important to find out. So it's, I don't think it's a number. I think it's, it's a selection. So anyone else? In which case, thank you, and uh, we'll see you for a beer. I just realized that, you know, why are we afraid of, of 